welcome to our On The Whistle podcast with Mr. Jetrin Barr, who's enjoying life in Northern Ireland again. Uh, I visited a game of his last year about this time. Uh, and Jetrin, one thing I'll tell you about that game, I, I've never been to a game where halftime, the supporters leave the stadium to go to the supermarket and come back. It was the weirdest <laughs> experience I've ever had. Jetrin, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. And it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Well, Jetrin, let's just get straight into it. You're no longer at Portadown, uh, yeah. small town out in Northern Ireland. You've made a move. Can you just tell uh, our viewers where are you currently and a bit more about your team and how did this move come about? Yeah, well, um, obviously we, we had a rough uh, campaign last season at Portadown and that left me with the decision, do I stay and help the team come back up or do I try and, you know, further myself this side? I'd been playing at Portadown for two years and obviously I looked at the league, um, the league below, it wasn't uh, as great as a, a league as I should be playing in. So I had to decide for myself what the next career step would be for me. And to be honest with you, I wasn't sure if I was going to go back to South Africa or, or carry on pushing this side of the world. So I really had to take my time about it. Um, I had my wedding coming up as well. So I was just focusing probably more on that than my next step. And then I was happy enough. I got a call up to, to the Kasafa during that, that time. So we'll, we'll get onto the Kasafa call up because like, um, as we know, during that period, it was, it was a very successful tournament for you guys. You played three games, uh, did very well in that period. But this move now that you've made, can you just let, because firstly, I don't know how to say the club's name correctly. So you're going to have to help me with that. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, how did the negotiations go? Because for quite a long period, you didn't actually have a club. Yeah. So obviously the... The Republic of Ireland Premier League runs differently compared to the Northern Irish Premiership. So the Northern Irish Premiership runs until, uh, is it May? And then the Republic of Ireland runs, obviously, during the summer until November. So it's a bit difficult to change between the two leagues when the other one ends. And so that would be probably the reason why I was out for a few months not having a team. But in terms of uh, Drogheda United... <laughs> okay, so hold on, hold on. Is it Trogada? Trogada, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, I'm not even going to try and say that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Trogada United actually um, contacted me. I was uh, talking to a few other teams uh, in that in that period, and I was close to joining another team. And then uh, Trogada had reached out to me, and they pretty much presented their proposal. I had a look through it and I knew that if I don't go back to South Africa, the next best step for me in my career would be to get into the League of Ireland. Um, it's uh, stronger than the Northern Irish Premiership. Probably the next step I would need to take this side before hopefully getting across the water to England or Scotland. So I was all too glad to join them. So, so you said you were in this period there was a bit of a lull. You had a few offers. I don't know if you can talk. Do you want to mention a few clubs where offers actually came from? Yeah. Um. I, when I say offers, I, I won't say it was offers. It it was like potential offers. People were questioning, saying, do you want to come? We can talk about it. And uh, I think I have mentioned those teams already. So it's nothing, nothing new, but it would be uh, Derry City in the League of Ireland. Um, and then there was three NFD teams back home. And there was uh, three PSL teams back home in South Africa as well that I was talking to. Okay. So, you, uh, so who are the three PSL teams? Yeah, those ones I can't say. <laughs> oh, those ones you can't say. But uh, listen, but I was, City, yeah, yeah. who are in your league, who are second at the moment in the table, are flying. Uh, but you chose Drogata. You, you, you guys are not in great form at the moment, I would say. Uh, you got a game against St. Patrick's this evening. Uh, how are you feeling about that game? Yeah, I mean, it was we we done analysis on them yesterday. They were just up in America playing against uh, Minnesota United. Um, that's one of my team former teammates were turning it on up there. 
So it's it's good that we're getting that kind of preparation as well. It felt like I was actually playing in the MLS for for a bit watching that uh, analysis. But I think the coaches uh, got some good uh, some some good reviews from from that side to see how we can actually approach this game tonight. So I'm feeling fairly confident we can go out and get something. Well, well, let's just hope the tide starts to change, you know, and you guys start to pick up points. It's still early in the season. You, you've only played five games, but St. Patrick's, who you are playing this evening, have played one more game. Um, so you said you've done your analysis. Anything that you need to be aware of for this evening's game? Uh, yeah, there's there's one or two two guys that are making a threat down on the wing that seem to be causing problems. So we're just hoping if we can get them a bit isolated that side, stop the balls in the box, we're gonna we're gonna be able to grind out a result there. But I think we should be fairly confident. Um, they got all the pressure on them. Everyone would expect them to come and and turn us over there at our home ground because it's St. Patrick's Athletic. But if you look at the last five games, they they haven't been very great. They've been struggling at the back as well. So I think we it's definitely a team we can get at. Oh, th th that's very good. That's fantastic. I hope you guys get the three points tonight and start moving away from the bottom of the table. But let, let's get back into Kasafa now, the tournament. You get called up for this tournament. Tell us, how how did it feel being in the camp under the title of Bafana Bafana and and playing the games, how did you feel settling in? <clears throat> yeah, obviously it was a dream come true for, for me. Since I came to Northern Ireland, I felt I was I was performing pretty well. And uh I'm glad that there are people there that have been monitoring me and decided to give me the call up. So I remember going into my first game, it was against Namibia, and I just feel like I'm the kind of player that you get one chance and that's it. I've noticed there's players back home, they can get two, three, four chances and they don't take it, but they keep getting new contracts, they keep, <laughs> they just keep getting getting chances after chances. I'm the type of player, I get one chance and that's it, and it's been like that my whole career, so I knew I have to keep it safe. Um, play with confidence and show everyone back home that I'm ready to be there and I felt that I did do that I went into the game I took all that pressure on my shoulders and we managed to grind out the results one of the things that um, which I also saw in person but in following your in following your career following you on social media is your ball distribution which I feel is almost close to Ronwin uh, who is the number one captain who is also the captain of the national team. Um, we Obviously, from the way you play, you start a lot of attacks. Was that encouraged when you were part of the team? Yeah, I think the coach uh, that brought me in at the time, who was standing in for Hugo Bruce, he said to me, just go out and express yourself. We, we know what you can do with the ball. Um, you can start attacks for us. Uh, so if it's on, do it. And he gave me that green light to go ahead and do it. And... I would say in the Namibian game, I was I was more cautious. But then from the second game in Botswana, I felt I really did express myself. And uh, I was playing pass after pass and starting wave after wave of attack from the back. So I'm, I'm happy that South Africa as a whole, you know, whoever was keeping tabs on Kusafa, got to see what I'm actually all about. And I think, you know, with what followed after and what everyone was saying, they would probably agree with you that I'm I'm close to that level of Ronan when it comes to ball distribution. So you must have watched the African Nations Cup. Did you possibly feel you had a chance of maybe getting into be maybe goalkeeper number three? What what were what were your feelings when the squad was being announced? Was there an option? Was there a conversation? Yeah, I think there were one or two conversations early on saying that, you know, I need to get a team now if I want to push to be in the AFCON squad. But I think month after month dragged out and, you know, by the time I was almost sort of settling in a drug, I just literally signed. 
and uh, the AFCON squad was already announced. So, I mean, you can't call up a player that hasn't been playing for six months and doesn't even have a team, you know. So, realistically, it was never going to be an option. Uh, I was never going to be an option for the coach. Um, I think right now, my focus needs to be getting back on the pitch, getting the minutes under my belt and raising my hand again. You know, I can. I don't know if you've seen the friendlies that have passed by, but uh, I think when Ronwin's not there, then it's a sort of a question of well, who do we play then? I and... I, I keep tabs on them. I keep watching them, and the one thing <laughs> I keep hoping is that the net of 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 uh, collecting players from across Europe is broadened, so you do get a call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. And in terms of goalkeeping, I honestly don't feel that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of great options that can really compete with Ronwin. And you know, when when I'm on the pitch and I'm doing well, I feel like I should raise my hand and be like, you know, I'm here. If if, if they want serious con competition for Ronwin, they know where to find me. You know, so well, I honestly feel like I can I can compete with them. Well, the beautiful thing about our conversation today is that. Uh, we will get the conversation out there, Jetran, and 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 let your expectations be known. So, are you feeling at this point in time, looking at your form, the start of the season, um, you feel that once you start hitting your peak form, you can start challenging for the number one spot? One hundred percent. I've always backed myself to to do that, and make no or make no bones about it that Ron Williams is a great goalkeeper. You know, he could easily be playing at the highest level in Europe. <clears throat> but there is room for someone to challenge him. And right now, as it seems, I don't feel anyone is stepping up to challenge the guy. And wh why must that be goalkeeping? If, if if you're comfortable, how do you hit your best form, you know? You need someone pushing you from behind. And that's that'll only benefit the national team as well. And like I said, I don't see anyone raising their hands. So... When I'm back on the pitch, I want to be the one that's raising my hand to say I'm here as well. It's, it's fantastic to hear. Um, and and having people like yourself in the background wanting to challenge the, 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 the stalwart, wanting to challenge the number one, only benefits the national team. Absolutely. Now, you said a bit earlier on, let's, let's come to club football. You've been at Drogheda, you've been... You you've started the season five games in game this evening. Uh, where do you see your pathway at club football? Where would you like it to go? May I ask? Well, I want to play at a, the highest level that I possibly can. To be honest with you, I mean, right now I'm in the League of Ireland, um, which is a good level. Uh, obviously, the better levels would probably be England and Scotland. So I would love to hopefully one day get a chance to go there. But I know i got to do the business in the Republic of Ireland first. Right now, I'm I'm stuck behind a, a very talented young goalkeeper in uh, Andrew Wogan at Drogheda United. He's the Ireland and the 21 national team goalkeeper. And uh, he's been doing well for us. But realistically speaking, I want to be the one to be doing the business for Drogheda. I understand that uh, he's he's one of their own and, you know, they're developing him and there's a lot of interest from teams in England already for him. So I've just got to be patient and, you know, I got my chance, my first chance to play against Athlone Town and I kept a clean sheet. I made a few good saves and when you're in this position, that's all you can do is control the things that you can control and let the rest, you know, do, do the rest. So that's the position I'm in now. I think... First things first is I need to get on the pitch and become number one for Drogheda United before anything else, because nothing else can happen unless I do that. Well, I think you're 100% right. Uh, you've got you've got to cement yourself in the team, um, <clears throat> start building the reputation. And I'm very sure with, with your style of play, and like we spoke about a bit earlier, with your distribution and moving the ball across the pitch, you'll start getting the 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 praises that you deserve. Um one of the things I wanted to ask you, and I don't, I know a lot a lot of the questions don't get a lot of people don't put these questions to goalkeepers. With your striking success, have you ever thought of well, I need to be taking free kicks? 
or potential penalties because you strike the ball beautifully, you know. And yeah. <laughs> for someone that really, really has become executes a very good strike, I was thinking, has it ever been a, an option for yourself? I always back myself in a penalty, yes. Free kicks, not so much. <laughs> But definitely penalties, yeah. Um, I tried to take one or two at Portadown, but unfortunately, the coaching staff waved me off. Well, listen, that, that and we missed both of them, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> uh, that just adds further, uh, <laughs> further utilities, if I could use that word, to you, to your pedigree. You know, you, you're not just a goalkeeper; you're able to produce goals at the other end as well when needed. Um, yeah. Just coming, back, <laughs> just coming back to a more of a serious note now. For for people in South Africa, where the weather is um, turbulent at times, but football's basically played during the summer period. What is it like weather-wise currently in Northern Ireland where you're playing football? Um, it's it's not great to be honest with you. This is this is the thing that uh, I don't think many people understand back home, is that these conditions that you play in as a goalkeeper are so tough. You've got the cold, number one. You've got the mud, you've got the rain, and you've got the wind. That's a recipe for disaster in terms of goalkeeping. Sounds like rugby because, weather. Yeah, it just it makes things so much harder as a goalkeeper. And then on top of all of that, you've got balls banged into the box and you're challenging against pretty much rugby players. Big six foot five, six foot six strikers and you're getting banged around the box. There's none of that in South Africa. You know, I've played in the PSL and it is a hundred times easier to play in the PSL as a goalkeeper than it is to play as a goalkeeper in the League of Ireland or Northern Ireland Premiership, to be honest with you. I mean, at Kosafa, I was coming and collecting balls and the weather was dry and no one was challenging me. I was like, this is lovely. I can do this all day, you know. Northern Ireland, you would get some six foot six guy on the back of your neck here tackling you and the referee wouldn't even give it a foul, you know. So well, I think that's that's the the style that I'm dealing with at the moment. All the weather conditions, everything is the reason why I feel like I've just taken my game to that next level, you know, because I'm playing at a much harder level in terms of goalkeeping than what goalkeepers are playing in back home. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know something in the in the game that I came to Portadown to watch. Um sitting in the grandstand um, and just listening to some of the supporters, the one phrase every time there was an opportunity for a cross at your goal or a corner, the comments that were just, put it in the mixer, put it in the mixer. And honestly, you can just, yeah, put it in there. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that poor goalkeeper is going to be under pressure the whole game. Because that was the phrase, you know, as you say, the, the aim is to exactly. hit the box as consistently as possible and use the Giants in there. Do you exactly. think that is the majority of ways teams play in Northern Ireland? In, in Northern Ireland, 100%, yes, I would say. <laughs> Put the ball in the box for the big man in the box. You know, try and knock out the goalkeeper before he gets to the ball and... They, uh, honestly, I've never seen anything like it. They they will take you out and the referee will say, play on. They, they're as hard as nails up in the north. I think it, right now in the Republic of Ireland, it's a bit different. I think the refs can protect you a bit more, but it's, it's also a bit of put it in the box and, <laughs> you know, get the big man on the end of it. Jethren, I just want to ask you now, as, as a goalkeeper within the team, and and you, we. I just want to focus a bit on on the training schedule because you've spoken about the difficulties of the game. How does the team prepare you for this physicality? Which, as you've just said, in South Africa there isn't, but within this league, it which is highly physical. How are you prepared by your team for games? Well, at Portadown, I had a a very good goalkeeper coach that was. Um... In, in terms of preparation for dealing with that, he would work with us throughout the week. You know, he would get uh, one of those rugby, there we go, word rugby is being mentioned again, those rugby, those rugby bags and the goalkeepers, two of them would come and knock me and, and hit me with that and then the ball would get whipped in. And it was exactly like the games, to be honest with you. 
So in terms of that, we do a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot of that kind of stuff. At Drogheda United, we've we've shied away from that a bit, it seems, with uh, the new goalkeeper coach I work with, and he's worried about more technical stuff. And I think the reason for that is, which is justified, is because it's not as physical as the Northern Irish League, you know? So I think you can you get away with that side if you don't work on it too much. But yeah, and, and definitely in Northern Ireland, we used to we used to do that with a lot of rugby equipment. So, oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so you you have to prepare yourself physically more yes. games than you've ever had to. Yes. Now, I I just I just want to I want to put something to you, and I I, I don't know how you're gonna take this at the moment. Imagine you are talking to the Bafana national coach Hugo Bross who's doing well. What would you be telling him are your current attributes that he should actually be looking at you for the national team? Well, I feel like I've already got three games under my belt. So I know the pressure of carrying the national team badge. You know, I know how to grind out results in the national team because I've already proved it now there at Kosafa. And in terms of my attributes, I feel I'm I'm confident. I can hit the ground running. Um, as I've been proving the last couple of years, I feel I've got uh, the ball distribution quality that he he looks for. You know, you, you can't just call any goalkeeper to play for Bafana Bafana. You need someone that can play from the back and get the passes out. And I feel like I'm the perfect candidate to do that. Then we've got all sorts of uh, different uh, competitions coming up, but realistically, we want to qualify for the World Cup. And who is the goalkeeper that's been playing most uh, overseas and adapting to overseas football, playing against different players from the so-called America and you know Ireland and England and Scotland and wherever they may be from. I've been playing with these guys. I've been playing in this side of the world in these conditions. And when the World Cup comes, it won't be anything different to me. But if you take a goalkeeper from the South African PSL and throw him in, into the World Cup, you know, it it can be very different for him, especially if you're going for the guys that haven't even re- really been playing for Bafana Bafana at all. If something happens to to Ronwin, you know? So I feel like I've also broadened my variety of uh, the leagues that I've played in. So I'm learning how to adapt to different styles of play, which is exactly what you'll get in the World Cup. So there's also that factor as well that I feel might, you know, be something to consider. Jetran, listening to that, uh, national team managers, selectors, coaches have got to be saying, listen, we've got to get the guy in the training camp at least, you know, <laughs> with all the success with that. Um, I'm just going to ask you um, a, a, a set of questions now. Very quick fire questions, which um, may not always pertain to football. Okay, so let's go with question number one. Your favorite place to eat in Northern Ireland? Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Nando's. Yes, a, a, a popular chain that can be found anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, let me let me not say too much on that, but yeah, Nando's. <laughs> Your your favorite place to eat in Durban, Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh, this is actually a bit of a different one. It's a place called La Rosa. Oh, tell us about it. It's a Mexican place um, in Sancos Casino that I used to love going to in my hometown in Durban, and uh, they make the best tacos. Yeah, but it was the first place I had tacos. I wanted to try them one day and I used to go there almost every, I'll say every second weekend after I had them. And I really wish I could have that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. oh, oh, so, so, okay, listening to that, question number three, the thing you miss most about South Africa that you can't get in Ireland? The weather. <laughs> That's a... I would say the weather, yeah. <laughs> it, it's also um I miss that like South African spirit, man, like of all the people, you know, you go into the garage and there's people dancing and making jokes and carrying on. 
miss like all of those kind of sort of little things, but I'd have to say the weather would be number one. <laughs> Question number four. This is now looking at your equipment you use. What are your favorite pair of boots that you wear? Is it a Nike material? Well, because if somebody asked me, I'd be going with the Copa Mandia. Ah, you see, <laughs> you like the old school things then. Oh, right? <laughs> listen, Copa Mandia, I tell you, well, uh, listen, okay, tell us why the Nike Mercurial, and I'll tell you why the Copa Mandia. Oh, it's, I mean, I've been using Nike since a young boy, uh, watching Kune play, you know, I, I grew up watching Kune, he was my favorite player, obviously, especially by the way I play now, but he was wearing Nike, I started wearing it, and I just became comfortable in the boot, and I've never looked back. <laughs> For me, Copa Mundial, it's just the touch and the comfort. Kangaroo leather, absolute, you can feel the ball. Uh, and what it does have, it has a rubber stud that, not in Northern Ireland conditions, but there in we go. South African <laughs> conditions, you could also use. <laughs> you could use it. Come play a game here. Yeah, let's see how you get on. <laughs> no, yeah, in Northern Ireland conditions, I've got to use the the Puma King uh, eight stud. I, I I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then finally, <laughs> your your favorite place to holiday. Oh, I'm I'm not much of a, a holiday person, to be honest with you. But yeah, I, mean, I would imagine it would probably be Cape Town. I love Cape Town. So okay. probably be Cape Town. Well, Mr. Jethran Bo, uh, it's always interesting to talk to you. We love your ambition. We love your 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 insight into the game and, and, and what you've told us about the preparation goalkeepers in your league have to go through. Um, I hope Bafana come knocking for you. You deserve that, especially with your promise you showed in the Kasafa Cup. Thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate it.